dear students next topic is uh, high performance liquid chromatography so this is a very very important topic and very recent uh, technology in the protein purification and all the different types of purification also and this one is more uh, very fast and a very high performance okay that is why we can purify in a very short duration itself the main advantage of uh, high performance uh, liquid uh, chromatography when compared to the conventional methods like uh, mm, iec gel filtration and uh, affinity by using conventional columns and all it will take uh, days together to purify the protein fractions at the same time the hplc the high performance uh, liquid chromatography is a uh, highly sophisticated equipment that is having okay the highly uh, maybe uh, the sophisticated uh, software controllable uh, mechanisms uh, okay that will separate uh, the different fractions by using different methodologies you can use different columns based on that for example if you want to use ion exchange chromatography in hplc you can use a column for ion exchange that means either uh, it is daa column or otherwise uh, uh, cm cellulose that means carboxy methyl cellulose so similarly for gel filtration or gel permeation you can use um, the different types of uh, cefatex or cefaros so whatever maybe you can use it based on your pore size of your protein and uh, for affinity chromatography also you can use such plc but very rarely we can use it and uh, mainly for ion exchange and gel uh, filtration or gel permeation we can use this type of method hp plc you can ask the question okay this is the only method available in the market okay for the purification of uh, products okay in the bio process no so each and every time maybe the new uh, the development is coming okay in the hplc uh, mechanism or methodology now we have the very uh, fastest uh, method okay that is than hplc that is the fast protein liquid chromatography okay that is especially and exclusively for uh, protein purification and uh, we can use affinity techniques in this uh, methodology also nowadays recently okay we have uplc uplc means uh, ultra performance uh, liquid uh, chromatography launched by med- uh, many of the con- uh, companies like uh, legends like uh, waters and agilent technologies and all so these are the leaders okay in uh, hplc mechanism or uh, machines and uh, uplc is a uh, recent one but the hplc is commonly used in the the quality control labs of majority of the uh maybe uh, the pharma industries uh, the qc lab or otherwise uh, food industries so all the students of the post graduation you should have the basic knowledge of what is hplc and what is the principle behind hplc mechanism and how it is separated and how it is uh, how the how the uh, mixture of uh, proteins are separated by using hplc and so what are the different parts in hplc and how it is working the working methodology and troubleshooting and all if you have the hands on experience in hplc you will get a job very easily in the industry especially in the food industry and the pharma industry also the main thing is uh, here i am going to explain in detail okay not uh, based on your syllabus because syllabus will cover okay only a small portion okay based on the examination point of view so this is uh, mostly most of my uh, topics uh, covering okay only uh, not only the examination point of view which covers widely uh, the application point okay that is uh, job oriented and higher studies oriented one so the main thing is the hplc is uh, differentiated from the liquid uh, chromatography is uh, maybe we can uh, uh, use high pressure okay for the separation of uh, uh, maybe the solutes very easily from uh, the column so that is advantage and second one is and the reproducibility we can use a constant uh, pressure so that is why there is no change in each and every time for example a person using a particular machine of uh, hplc with uh, a constant uh, a particular bar of pressure and uh, the, the the constant uh, solute okay maybe for for example okay the, the separation of uh, paracetamol or something and at the same time the solvent so what is the mobile phase okay, he is going to use it so this is same in uh, all uh, parameters like all the machines and all over the world okay that means uh, it is reproducible 
so this phenomenon is not common okay in the chromatography if it is manually done by the persons so that is a main advantage and most of the companies why they are relying on hplz machines means so that is why it is giving okay highly uh, reliable results and reproducible results reliable means you can 100% okay like there is no chance of error at the same time reproducible how many times you are doing if you are doing 100 times also you will get same peak and same time that's all so there is no difference in the the process and everything so that is why we are going to see in detail okay so this one is very very important not only for the examination point of view i am telling again okay this is for the application part and uh, so this is the machine the hplc machine look like uh, you can see here okay this is the, mm, uh, the the main machine and the control uh, area okay this is the display usually Uh, lft display or otherwise okay maybe uh, nowadays okay this uh, touch screen okay may be possible so this is not a touch screen you can see a lot of buttons will be there so this is not a very old one but at the same time the old one okay and uh, maybe 10 years back okay this one is uh, released and now we have very sophisticated and uh, mostly okay there is no display in uh, the machine also so everything is controllable from the system that is everything is software oriented for example some of the companies like waters they have uh, third generation software okay that is uh, empower 3 so this empower 3 can control the machine effectively in each and every step not only for hplc including for uplc also we can do that so this is the rack for uh, uh, storing the water that is uh, solvent bottles and uh, so this is the detector you can use the detector either uv visible detector or dad detector that is a diode array detector and also the fluorescent detector and uh, these are the detectors we can use it including ir detectors also there okay there are lot of detectors are there based on your uh, components we can use it commonly used one is uh, dad diode array detector diode array detector is a very common one and if you are not uh, familiar with your substance or what you are going to purify it and that is the first time you are going to do it means you can follow uh, the detector that is not fluorescent or uv visible diode array detector so that is the best one but in our cms college okay we have waters uh, hplc machine with the diode array detector uh, with the, the, the column controllable uh, that is column chamber with uh, temperature control and uh, this is the chromatogram okay in the system okay by using the software we can manage it at the same time okay this is sample manager and we can store all the samples here and this is solvent manager maybe you can load the samples uh, solvent here or otherwise you can store if it is a larger volume you can store it here okay this is the uh, the typical setup of uh, hplc machine and if you see the block diagram of uh, hplc so this is the the complete block diagram what is the different parts of hplc so the main thing is a solvent because we need a mobile phase and a stationary phase is the hplc column nothing but okay hplc column is nothing but okay your uh, resin is loaded for example if you are using ion exchange chromatography there are two resins are there cation exchanger and anion exchanger either da cellulose or cm cellulose you can use it and this is already available with ready made packed one or otherwise nowadays you can pack it okay if you have uh, the machineries or otherwise okay if you are able to do the packaging you can do it okay manually also and this is the mobile phase and this is the stationary phase this mobile phase is a highly purified one not even a single uh, maybe the trace of uh, any dust or something okay this is highly purified one and all the solvents okay not used in the laboratory reagent or ar that is hplc grade solvents are required so that is why the solvents are little expensive it is not like for example if you are getting an acetone or acetonitrile okay for uh, laboratory purposes okay that may be very cheap uh, maybe uh, 200 rupees or 250 rupees okay for uh, 200 ml at the same time if you want to purchase the hplc uh, grade solvent uh, acetonitrile okay that may be uh, double the amount of uh, the cost of ala reagent so that is why the hplc reagent is nothing but it's a highly purified one 99.9% purity and there is no trace of any metal ions or something okay that is why it will not give any additional the false peaks and all okay this is the solvent and we need a pump okay the high pressure pump to deliver the 
the liquid into the column okay this is the inlet of the column and this is the outlet of the column and in between okay the during the path of uh, the on the way to the pump okay there is a port is there that is called as injector injector or sample loader or uh, auto sampler okay sample manager okay you can use so many terms okay for this the main thing is you can you can load the sample okay by uh, um, hamilton syringe you can get uh, maybe the 0.3 ml of the sample you can do it for analytical uh, hplc and if it is semi preparative or preparative you can do different types of uh, volumes okay ranging from uh, uh, 0.2 ml to uh, 2 ml okay for semi preparative and the preparative one okay maybe you can use it for 100 ml also and uh, this is this is a pump and usually okay, this pump is more powerful and it is made up of metal and uh, this is not uh, the corrodable one this is alloy alloy made uh, pump okay there is no point of uh, corroding if you are using the solvent also okay this will apply the pressure and pump okay to the column at the on the way to the pump you can inject your sample maybe before injecting the sample you have to maintain a uh, linear line okay that is uh, there is no trace of any peaks okay here the outlet is connected with a detector okay this is a detector i already told okay the detector is classified into different types okay that is uv visible detector fluorescence detector and also dad that is a diode array detector and ir detector that is a ir infrared detector there are four different detectors are available and uh, the better one is uh, dad that is a diode array detector and uh, this will detect the signal and uh, the, there is a flow cell is there i will explain okay what is the type of flow cell and the animation and there is a flow cell and uh, through that okay the sample will go and come out come out okay and uh, this uh, the uh, the data is uh, going to the system and uh, the software analyzes the uh, data and it will give the chromatogram and the outlet will be the waste you can collect the waste okay in the analytical uh, hplc if it is a semi preparative or preparative there is a machine attached okay here this is called as uh, the fraction collector the fraction collector will collect all the different samples based on your peak for example this peak is collected separately okay in a fraction collector and another peak okay may be collected in a separate uh, the fraction okay that is advantage of uh, hplc machines now we can go to the next one so these all the different times uh, different bands uh, may be uh, possible by uh, separation of uh, hplc by using hplc method this is a passing of mobile phase you can see here this is the sample and within a duration of time okay this may be separated or resoluted into different bands so all the band one by one okay is coming out and that is uh, going to the flow cell the flow cell is nothing but a detector um, like a machine of uh, uv visible spectrophotometer this is a miniature one that's all so uv visible spectrophotometer you have in your lab okay that is the biggest one at the same time here this is a very minimum and uh, the liquid will go and come out okay this is the data you will get it and based on the data you can analyze it you can see here okay this is the data and based on the peak volume okay if you can see here this is a peak volume in the sample b the the peak volume is uh, the size of the peak is very small based on the surface area of the peak we can calculate okay, how much amount of uh, uh, maybe the quantity okay, of the uh, solute is present for example this peak gives one picogram of the solute at the same time the sample a if it is injected means okay this sample is having uh, the 10 times okay that is the 10 picograms of uh, you can see the difference this is the peak is very high and the peak is very small and based on the surface area of the peak we can calculate automatically the machine will calculate and give the value of how much quantity of the sample is present okay in the uh, uh, injected sample so that is the main advantage of hplc machine and coming to the classification of hplc the um, hplc is further classified into different types one is isocratic and uh, gradient uh, lc that is a liquid chromatography system of operation you can see here isocratic means only one solvent and uh, there is a constant uh, pressure is applied the same um, maybe same uh, the diagram we used okay in the previous slide okay this one so this is called as uh, isocratic and uh, uh, the same uh, there is no uh, different solvents only one solvent only one pump and one column that's all so next coming to the gradient elution gradient means uh, i already explained about the gradient in the ion exchange chromatography by keeping two beakers one is sodium chloride and another one is a buffer and siphoning and everything i already explained okay to you and or otherwise you can refer the video okay posted uh, previously as ion exchange chromatography 
so in the gradient elution you can can have a uh, two different uh, solvent solution a is sol solvent a and solvent b and that is placed on the top of the hplc machine you can see here this is right told okay this is a rack for keeping the bottles so you can keep two bottles here and uh, so these two bottles are uh, here okay these are the two the solvent a and solvent b and each solvents okay may be attached with uh, two different pumps and uh, two different uh, different pumps connected with a mixer and after the mixer okay there is a port okay that is called as uh, injected port or um, sample injected port and after that this is going to the hplc column you can see here the difference between the previous one only one solvent is uh, pumped by only one pump and and on the way to the column okay there is a sample injector is there so here you can see there are two different solvents or there solvent a and solvent b and these two different pumps are controlled by a controller that means uh, uh, maybe you can control uh, how much volume of the pump a should work and the pump b what is the pressure it has to work you can manually control or otherwise you can program it in a such a way and this will mix okay both the solvents and pass through the hplc column okay this is the injector and this is uh, that is on the way to the column and this is uh, uh, the output of the column is uh, going to the flow cell that is a detector and that is getting the data passed to the computer and the waste okay the outlet will be connected to the waste okay if it is as i already told if it is a pre uh, that is semi preparative and a preparative hplc the volume handling is more so that you can collect the samples for each and every peak can be collected okay uh, here in the fraction collector in different tubes so this is second method and the uh, next one is the low pressure uh, uh, the gradient system so this is low pressure means uh, maybe you can use uh, more than two solvents so this is more uh, advanced one you can see here solvent a solvent b solvent c and the solvent d you can keep four different uh, solvent bottles on the top of hplc machine and this is a gradient uh, proportioning valve okay that is connected with each and every solvent and connected with only one pump for example you can program in a such a way okay this uh, gradient uh, partitioning valve that will get a particular proportion of the particular uh, solvent on a particular time and uh, pass on to the uh, pump and this pump will uh, push the liquid okay to the hplc column okay as an inlet okay on the way to the inlet okay there is a injector will be there there is sample injector will be there and the outlet is connected with the detector as usual okay that's all so this is setup okay is uh, work work in low pressure you should not use okay maybe high pressure okay for uh, uh, maybe for uh, the routine work and all okay this is four solvents but effectively you can do it so this is also commonly uh, used in the pharma industry because uh, so most of the compounds um, cannot be resoluted by only two solvents uh, you need uh, maybe uh, two or more solvents that is why there, there is an option okay for uh, uh, maybe upgradation that is why if you want to use four solvents you can use it here or otherwise if you want to use only two solvents also you can use it here so that is the advantage maximum four so you can use maximum four okay here so next coming to the preparative uh, chromatography I, I already told okay analytical analytical means okay this type of one this will you will get only the value and all the uh, output may be collected as a waste you cannot use or otherwise you cannot collect the sample okay uh, from uh, for example if you have three different types of uh, proteins or three different compounds you cannot get uh, three different compounds in a uh, three different fractions so you will get only as a liquid or drop that's all and you will get the report that's all but this report is uh, more than sufficient okay for the quality control labs and all so no need to separate that one but if a person working in the bioprocess laboratory if a, a person want to use hplc for the purification aspect okay if they want means uh, this is the best one that means uh, preparative or semi preparative chromatography in this case the volume is very big you can see the column is the bigger column and uh, the solvent the solvent reservoir is also big and the pump is also big one and sample injector usually uh, 300 ml to 400 ml or 500 ml sample can also be injected okay by using this one and this detector after the detectant uh, that, that is a flow cell the data going to the chromatogram at the same time the outlet is connected with the fraction collector now the fraction collector's duty is to collect each and every fraction this is first peak okay may be collected in the first uh, maybe test tube and the second fraction collected in the second test tube and third fraction is collected in the third test tube after that okay all the remaining one is collected in the waste 
okay so this is called as uh, the preparative chromatography whatever you are going to get in the results in the peak in the chromatogram you will get in the uh, maybe the fraction collector but this one is uh, very expensive because the fraction collector is fully automated either by drop method or otherwise based on the absorption you can check it and if the absorption is going to be the absorption going to increase here in this point okay this is going to collect okay this liquid that is yellow red and blue so the yellow the starting point of the absorption this is going to collect okay this one and this is going to the top and coming to the bottom this is a real zero level of absorption automatically at the time of uh, zero level of absorption so this collection is stopped again the zero baseline is there. this baseline all the baseline uh, the liquid is uh, collected by uh, the waste one and second one if there is a slow increase or minute increase in the absorption automatically the second peak will be collected as red and next okay th this also so similar by this way based on the absorption okay this is the delta a that means absorption okay based on the detection procedure okay the fraction collector will work and collect all the samples so this is the mechanism of uh, preparative uh, chromatography and uh, so we can have the different types of so the analytical chromatography, semi-preparative chromatography, preparative chromatography and the process based that is the industrial large scale. The preparative and all okay maybe you can use it in the small industries and all. At the same time if your industry is dealing with okay the uh, producing kilograms of proteins or kilograms of products if you want to do it. So that you have to go for the process based uh, uh, HPLC machines. So here, for example, analytical scale, okay, the information is uh, the compound, you can get only the compound ID or concentration, how much amount is there, that's all. I already told, okay, there is a peak, based on the surface area of the peak, you will get how much concentration is there and what is the compound is present. Whether, okay, there is uh, uh, maybe the paracetamol or otherwise sodium chloride, okay, whatever maybe is available, you will get the compound ID. And uh, usually this uh, database is connected with uh, NAST, okay, that is um, the database, okay. The database will compare and finally that will give the product, okay. And uh, this is semi-preparative, that is the data, you will get the data and the small amount of purified compound that is uh, approximately, okay, less than 0.5 gram of uh, the compounds can be collected by semi-preparative. So this may be useful, okay, in the small labs like uh, maybe the research labs like uh, in the college level or uh, research institute level okay maybe it's okay but at the same time the preparative hplc that is the preparative hplc can be used in the industry that is a um, uh, larger amount of purified compounds can be used okay here and that is a 0.5 gram of uh, the compounds can be used okay for the uh, purification okay just we can uh, see here this is lesser than 0.5 gram and this is more than 0.5 gram Next one is the process, the industrial scale or industrial level, the process, the manufacturing quantities are more, okay, from grams to kilograms, you can use it. You can see the, the size of uh, the analytical column, okay, this is the size of the analytical column, that is uh, 1 millimeter to 50 millimeter, that is the internal diameter, length maybe 20 millimeter to 500 millimeter. And this is the preparative one, you can see with the size of the, the tube, okay, the stainless steel tube. So this is uh, more lengthy and more wider. So that is the difference. So this is the animation I will explain to you. Okay, this one. And uh, so this animation is very useful to understand the concept of uh, high performance uh, chromatography. You can listen. Okay, this instrument is using uh, UV visible detector. And you can see here this is a machine with reservoir and also the, the oven. Okay, to keep the constant temperature for the column. Okay, this is the column and inlet and outlet and uh, the data is uh, transferred to the system that's all just we can have a look so what is uh, available okay in the hplc and what is the principle involved in this so this is a beautiful animation this will give the clear picture about uh, how the hplc is working high performance liquid chromatography is a technique in analytical chemistry used to separate identify and quantify each component in a mixture as well as other forms of chromatography, in HPLC there is a mobile phase, which forced by a pump to pass through the system. And there is a stationary phase called a column, which located in an oven where the temperature can be controlled. The sample can be automatically injected into an HPLC system by the use of HPLC autosampler. Or can be manually introduced into the injector using a syringe.
There is also a detector attached to the HPLC system, which measures the analytes after its separation in the column. The pump forces the mobile phase through the column. And then the detector, under high pressures. In the HPLC system, a vacuum pump and a degasser are connected to the pump and used to remove dissolved gases from the solvents. The pump... So here there is a uh, maybe term used by okay, this animation uh, daughter that is a degasser. Okay, this equipment is uh, the default with HPLC because without degasser there is no HPLC. The main pur purpose of uh, degasser is for example if it is sticking or siphoning the liquid okay, from the reservoir if any uh, traces of air bubbles that may uh, give the results of uh, uh, maybe very poor results and uh, there is no proper uh, the the reproducible results in the peak uh, the, or chromatogram so and maybe disturbing the pump also so so better we have to remove the gas so the degasser that will give uh, remove the gas okay in both pumps so that is why this is called as degasser so this is a default uh, component so you cannot uh, say that okay my HPLC machine is without a degasser or something okay so degasser is nowadays inbuilt as a constant or component of uh, HPLC machine pump drives each solvent to the mixing chamber where mixing takes place under higher pressures HPLC analysis commonly uses isocratic or gradient elution in isocratic mode the mobile phase composition in the isocratic illusion, I, I already told, okay, there are two different isocratic and gradient level. And isocratic is the constant. You can fix 70% of uh, the solution E. So this is 70% of solution E and 30% of solution B. This is called as isocratic. The the percentage is very co very constant. Okay, that is why the constantly that will mix uh, with the pump and this is going to the column. Okay. Position so, remains constant throughout the procedure. Whereas in gradient mode, the mobile phase composition is changed. So in the gradient illusion, the mobile phase composition may be changing. Or maybe you can change 50-50 and initially starting with 50-50 and slowly you can increase the concentration to. So this solvent okay, may be 75 and or 80 or 85 or this may be reduced to 20 or 25. So you can program accordingly. Okay, what is the, uh, the initial one? and what is the uh, gradually it is going to be increased okay which one is going to be increased which one is going to be constant okay that one we can fix it okay by gradient elution this is a very very important one during the separation process sample introduction can be accomplished in various ways the simplest method is to use an injection so this is the mechanism of uh, a sample injector you can see this is the setup you can see only the outside one and there is a port for Hamilton syringe. This syringe is not an uh, ordinary syringe or surgical syringe or otherwise okay, used in IV uh, injection at all. Okay, this is a um, stainless steel uh, Hamilton syringe. So, this, so that is uh, uh, that is aseptic one. You have to keep it aseptic and you have to wash it uh, properly with the buffer and also you have to keep it in a very protected environment okay with a sterile atmosphere and this is the injector and the injector having the small uh, the mixing uh, that is a coil uh, maybe uh, with constant temperature and also uh, uh, that is an exhaust exhaust means okay there may be waste okay a particular volume okay if you are injecting it so starting from here this point to so this coil and coming to this area so that is the volume is required for example this volume is approximately uh, two, but is 0.2 uh, that is uh, uh, two microliters to three microliters capacity. And if it is a uh, analytical level, and this may this uh, volume may vary okay for different types of uh, HPLC machines. For example, semi preparative and preparative. Just have a look. Action valve in the load position, the high pressure eluding solvent flows to the column directly. The loop. So here you can see this is a pump and from the pump the the liquid is uh, coming the after mixing this is a pump okay this after mixing okay this is coming and going to the column this is the inlet to the column at the same time okay here this uh, how it is going to change okay this you can see is loaded at the atmospheric pressure from a syringe via the needle port excess sample exits the loop via vent port 
now you can see the, now the sample is loaded okay this ash color is sample is loaded now now i'm going to change the knob okay there is a knob here in the center and if you're changing it the total alignment will be changed and automatically this will be the sample will be connected with this one just you can have a look after loading the sample the valve is switched to the inject position the flow delivered by the pump flows through the loop forcing the sample so if it is the uh, lever is opened automatically the pump will supply okay directly here and this is also connected and uh, the solvent is uh, washing your sample and through the loop it is going to come and finally it okay, goes to the column so this is a method of uh, injection pull ahead of it flowing to the column then the valve returns to the load position and the mobile phase moves the sample through the column now after loading the sample you can see here may maybe you already injected okay two to three microliter of the sample and after that you want to change it to normal mode means uh, you have to ensure that okay that is already passed uh, to the proper particular time you have to wait maybe for uh, 30 seconds you have to wait and after that you have to uh, change the knob into the back to the normal one now you can see the pump uh, delivers again to the column directly okay there is no proper connection but this is with uh, liquid okay that is a solvent yeah this is a mechanism of uh, the sample loading the separation is based on differential partitioning of the sample components between the mobile and stationary phases the comp so this is inside the column you can see here these are all the resins uh, present within the column and outside this is stainless made up of stainless steel and you are injecting your sample so this sample is having okay, three different components as an example here the blue and uh, maybe the orange color and also the green color just you can have a look at how it is going to be separated component which has more affinity to the mobile phase consequently less affinity to the stationary phase travels faster and eluted so this is uh, the first uh, uh, mechanism is based on the affinity affinity means the interaction with the uh, stationary phase for example you can see here this interaction with the stationary phase is more means okay that is shown as uh, orange color okay and affinity towards mobile phase is called as okay maybe this one is uh, uh, that is a green color in between okay this is a component so that means this uh, the molecule having more interaction more affinity towards the uh, and the resins that is why th there is a retardation okay will be there there is a uh, maybe the delay in the separation process but in the case of the first one so there is no attraction the affinity is very less but affinity not towards the stationary phase to the mobile phase mobile phase is moving moving means the solvent the solvent will take okay this one so that is why if you load three samples three different molecules in a sample okay if you are loading in the first uh, the starting of the column and uh, through the column all the three are separated and you will get uh, different uh, proteins or uh, three different uh, compounds or three different proteins will be separated and you will get it now first and the component which has more affinity to the stationary phase consequently more interaction travels slower and eluted later this separation can be carried out according to which type of HPLC used. So now we are going to come to the second level of the classification that is a reverse phase chromatography and normal phase chromatography. That means uh, uh, reverse phase means uh, the phase is different. For example, so previously we had an idea about okay what is inside. If the inside of the column is uh, the hydrophobic material that is uh, uh, that is uh, mobile phase is uh, hydrophilic and uh, uh, that is uh, static that is uh, stationary phase is uh, hy hydrophobic means that is called as reverse phase okay the reverse phase is uh, maybe you can remind okay that one this is very important the mobile phase is uh, this is the mobile phase that is why it is kept here okay this is a solvent that is a polar that is water based okay this is a buffer or something okay like and maybe 70 percent alcohol or ethanol maybe okay like that and you can see here okay this one is a column inside the column the resin is hydrophobic hydrophobic means uh, maybe water repelling one so there is no point of interacting with water so that is why this is hydrophobic you can see here the normal phase of chromatography usually the solvent is uh, uh, maybe acetone or otherwise acetone also okay the partially uh, polar at the same time the chloroform or petroleum ether likewise okay this all the non-polar solvents okay can be used here as a solvent okay here solvent a and b at the same time this column is a polar one 
polar means water based or water interacting one the beads will interact with water so that is why this is polar and this is non polar you can see the difference this is a major difference between the reverse phase hplc and normal phase hplc and that this type of hplc machine that is the reverse phase hplc can be used to separate only hydrophobic components hydrophobic components can be interacting more okay with the hydrophobicity and hydrophilic uh, components can be separated by using this method the normal phase you can use enzymes uh, proteins or something okay for normal phase hplc at the same time if it is a membrane protein uh, membranes or maybe em membrane embedded proteins having more hydrophobic regions okay that type of proteins you can separate by hydrophobic uh, reverse phase chromatography okay hydrophobic inclusion chromatography or otherwise reverse phase chromatography both are same only okay and i already explained okay the mechanism of uh, the reverse phase uh, chromatography and uh, hydrophobic inclusion chromatography previous video you can uh, refer it there are two main types of hplc reverse phase and normal phase reversed phase has a non-polar stationary phase and moderately polar mobile phase one common stationary phase is a silica which has been modified by attaching a straight chain alkyl group to its surface such as the ectatus can see here this is there are two different types of uh, hydrophobic uh, uh, chromatography that is reverse phase chromatography either c8 or c8 c18 or uh, c8 column and uh, see the 18 is uh, based on the carbon numbers you can see here the to the silica is attached with the carbons different carbons so these are the number of carbons maybe depends on the the type of uh, the c18 or c8 C18 is uh, C8 is shorter and C18 is uh, very longer, and this one, this one is highly hydrophobic. This will not interacting with water because there is no ionic charges will be there. This will group C18 or the octal group C8. In this case, the more hydrophobic the analytes are, the more retained they will be on the stationary phase. The more polar they are, the more they. can see here okay here this is a non polar one you can see this is a non polar highly non polar and this is polar so the polar one will go very fast because that is there is a repulsion okay between uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic actually this is hydrophobic and this is hydrophilic so that is a uh, due to the repulsion okay this is taken away by uh, the mobile phase so this is medium one okay this is uh, maybe in between the polarity of uh, this one and uh, this one also so the medium one is separated in the second level and this is retarded by uh, based on the polarity this is more non polar that is why interacting with uh, the beads and it is uh, pushed by the mobile phase so that is why okay this is coming little late they will prefer the mobile phase in normal phase chromatography the stationary phase is polar and the mobile phase is nonpolar this method separates analytes based on their affinity for a polar stationary surface such as silica the normal phase uh, hplc machines are having uh, the column okay with the silica majority one uh, that is only the simple adsorption chr chromatography and if you want to go for hplc with uh, ion exchange chromatography you can have uh, two different types of uh, resins one is uh, DEA cellulose or uh, CM cellulose, and if you want to go for uh, gel filtration chromatography, and you need gel filtration resins within the column that is uh, Cefadex or Cefarose. Okay, these are the two we already studied in the gel filtration also. And third one is uh, the hydrophobic inclusion chromatography or otherwise uh, reverse phase chromatography. I already told okay C18 or C8. So these are the three different one, and the the fourth one is affinity chromatography. to the cefaros one you can attach the uh, the carbon norm with the ligand so that is specially designed for your uh, need of interest and the protein of interest or the product of interest and you can use it for uh, the custom made one okay commonly available ones with uh, the c18 or uh, c8 column and uh, silica column and uh, uh, dae and uh, um, cm cellulose column and cefadex or cefarose columns these are the very commonly available one but affinity columns not available but affinity maybe uh, the for the separation of igg it is available so this is igg means uh, separation means uh, the protein a column so protein a is uh, attached with the column that is uh, cefadex or cefarose and that can be used for the separation of uh, immunoglobulin g
In this case, the more polar the analytes are, the more retained they will be on the stationary phase. The more hydrophobic they are, the more they will prefer the mobile phase. As compounds elute from the column, they interact with the detector. Different types of detectors can be used such as the UV vis detector, which showing an absorption spectrum in the ultraviolet or visible region. For UV detection, a deuterium discharge lamp as a light source is used. And for components detection in visible region, a tungsten lamp is used. In UV vis detector we can also find entrance slit, lens, prism or diffraction grating, exit slit, flow cell, and detector for absorption measurement. So this is set up okay, within the detector and detector uh, the light source will be there so based on your the type of detector for example if you have UV visible detector you have two lamps okay one is a UV lamp uh, that is called as a deuterium lamp and uh, the tungsten lamp for the visible range so that is why it is called as UV and visible range there is an entrance slit okay through that the light may pass and the lens is focusing the light to the prism and the prism uh, diffract uh, diffraction grating will be there usually the prism is outdated nowadays okay now we have the diffraction grating and uh, if there is a slight uh, maybe the turning of uh, the diffraction grating automatically that will focus uh, the particular wavelength to the exit slit and exit slit focus to the flow cell this is uh, made up of quartz usually or the glass is also possible because if you're using the UV light, okay, the quartz is must because uh, the glass will absorb the UV light. That is why mostly the flow cells for the UV visible range and IR range and also uh, for the, um, uh, the photodiode array, that is uh, DAD. That is also uh, maybe uh, this one is the quartz made. So this is the inlet of the solute coming from the uh, separator column. And now this is a go and like this and this is the exit. And so this is a light path and this light path passes through the flow cell and uh, pass on or otherwise the falls on the detector. So this detector is uh, the photo multiplier tube and this will detect and multiply the voltage and automatically send the signal to the uh, software. You can see here how it is working. Light from the lamp is shown onto the prism and dispersed according to wavelength. When the measurement is performed with a specific wavelength, the angle of the prism is adjusted so that the light of this wave can shine on the flow cell. As the compounds elute from the column, they enter the flow cell. Where the bonding and non-bonding electrons of these compounds can absorb energy in the form of ultraviolet or visible light. The manner in which the final data is displayed is based on the computer and software, the number of peaks present can indicate how many components are in the mixture. Usually, so this is called as chromatogram. This is the final output of uh, HPLC. You can see here that there is a X axis and Y axis. In the X axis, the retention time in minutes is uh, depicted here. So, this is the retention time in minutes, and Y axis is absorption, that is uh, delta A in the milli absorption units. Okay, this is the absorption. You can see here the the fifth minute to sixth minute. Okay, maybe the sixth minute. So there is a peak that this compound is coming out from uh, the column. Okay, that is detected by the detector. Okay, this one is giving the absorption, and based on this surface area, automatically the software will calculate. Okay, how much amount of the substance is present, and that will give the how many picograms or uh, um, nanograms or uh, micrograms of your substance. Present okay in the sample. The x axis of the HPLC chromatogram shows the amount of time taken for the analytes to pass through the column and reach the detector. Typically, the y axis, or the area of the peak, is a reflection of the amount of a specific analyte that's present. High performance. So with this uh, we can conclude uh, HPLC and uh, so this is a very very important topic high performance uh, liquid uh, chromatography and this is a base for uh, um, FPLC and uh, UPLC also. The UPLC nowadays is very common in all the pharma companies also.
so there is a requirement of the basic requirement of handling the hplz or troubleshooting and an experience at least what are the components of hplz it is must to enter into the pharma industry i request all the students to go through this video and learn so what is hplc and get acquainted with all the uh, techniques and also the the information and uh, uh, maybe the the, the principles of uh, separation process and different parts of hplc also thank you